welcome back. I am doing a big painting for you today. This is going to be one that goes in my bedroom above my bed. At the moment I've got the same size canvas hanging there, um, but it's a swipe. It's something I did two years ago when I started pouring and I pretty much started pouring and, and did swipes for quite a while and then moved on to flip cups. But today I thought, I think it's about time that that painting had a bit of a rest and I put up something different. As you know, I've been working on um, my sandwich pours, so I thought, why not do a big canvas in a sandwich pour? And um, <laughs> I did have a go previously, as you can see, scraped. Um, two reasons I scraped it. The first, first reason, um, I got about 10 minutes in and the video stopped recording. I changed the size of my videos, not knowing that it would actually make my video shorter. But that's not the reason I scraped it. I, would, I mean, I would have kept it if it was really pretty, but I, I think that my white was a little bit thick. Uh, for sandwich paws, I, I found that the white does have to be thinner, otherwise, um, just because of the technique, um, you have because it's so much white, the cells have trouble popping through, and the white's an opaque, so it does have a little bit of trouble. Um, the cells have a little bit of trouble popping through, so uh, yeah, I just thought I'll do it again and video it. This canvas is, it's a biggie, it's a 20 inch by 60 inch, uh, 50 centimetre by 150 centimetre, and I have got three and a half kilos of mixed paint. Um, 3.6 actually to be exact, 3,600 grams. You can divide that by 30 and it'll give you the ounces. Uh, 3,000 is 100 ounces, so yeah, it's it's a lot of mixed paint. I find when I'm doing the sandwich pours, I need two parts white to one part colour. So I've got that here, and as you can see, I'm just layering my, my white first, just to save some time. Now some videos I'll start talking <laughs> and not get into the actual pouring like till you know eight minutes in or something. So it's going to be a long-ish video, I guess. Um, so yeah, just get started. What else can I tell you? Uh, pouring medium. Sixty percent glue. I've used Elmer's glue all, and forty percent water with my Montmartre studio acrylic paints. Uh, when I'm using the Montmartre, I have to use a, a thinner pouring medium. I've actually got six bottles of 65-35 um, ratio. I've got six bottles, actually seven of each, 60-40. Uh, um, so when the classes, when I do the classes, depending on what people are using, if they're Montmartre, they'll use the 60-40. This one, and if they're using global, they use the 65-35. So it's different for each type of paint. But that's it there, the Montmartre Studio Acrylic. Uh, the colours, I've kind of made them myself. This one is a peach colour. They've already got the oil in them, the silicone oil. That one's charcoal. Uh, I made a pale pink, and then I made a darker pink. So these are the colours that are in my bedroom. That's the spot on treadmill silicone that I used. I put six drops in each of the colours, none in the white. I'll move that out the way and I'm going to start layering. They're not going to have the same colours in the same order. They will all hopefully have the same colours but just not in the same order. Okay, so here we go. Put a little bit of the the pink. Now this is going to take me a while because it, it, I've got a lot to do here so please fast forward if you don't want to watch me layering paint and uh, we can catch up in a few minutes once I'm done but if you want to stay and chat with me so to speak then yeah stay tuned. I have to make sure I don't use too much um, paint because I do need to have every colour in every cup. So 
it's a bit tricky trying to remember which colour I've got where. But uh, because they're clear glasses, or clear cups I should say, it's pretty easy to see what I've done. This charcoal I did have to mix a little bit thinner. Being black it's always quite a thick paint. So I did have to mix him a little bit thinner. Probably should have left two for the black, shouldn't I? I'm calling it black, it's almost black, it's charcoal. Okay, so that's you done. Now I'm gonna start up here with my second layer. I don't want the peach next to the pale pink. So you can have the dark pink next to the light pink. And you can have some peach. So I'm just going to do two layers first and then hopefully I'll remember what I'm up to. Um, and you can have some, what can you have? You can have some peach I guess. It's two for you, you've all got two. And you can have some darker pink. And that means you have to have, oh no, you can have some peach, peach on the dark pink. And what you got in you? You've just got the charcoal in you, haven't you? Yes, I think so. So some of that. that and then you need some peach well you need some peach too actually I might put some black next to the other colors first Hopefully I've got enough paint to get through. I've got nine flip cups here. Now let me see if they've all got peach. You have you haven't. Yes, 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 yes. Alright, so you're the only one who hasn't got peach, so let's give you some peach. And then I think you're done, aren't you? It's just as well I can see through the sides, otherwise I wouldn't know where I was. A bit tricky when you're doing each cup differently. You've got to try and remember what's already gone in. Not that it makes a lot of difference if you miss one colour, but I would like to try and get them all to be similar. Okay, um, three, three, oh, you need some there. So you can have the dark pink. So you're done. And you need the light pink. Oh goodness, I'm making a mess here. Gloves are getting slippery. Okay, that's you done. Um, oh, okay, you're gonna have to have the pink next to the apricot. So you're done, you're done. You're done. Done, you need a little bit of this one. And you need some of the charcoal. You need the charcoal and the pink. So I think you're the only one that needs the pink, so you can have the rest of it. Not that there's much, but just the last little bit. So that's worked out okay. They've each got a little bit of each colour. 
I got eight cups out and then I thought, no, I better make it nine just to help cover because this is a big surface to cover. I haven't got any extra paint like to, to do the corners because I am going to flip them over and then I'm going to um, tilt. And then afterwards I will torch and then tilt it again just to stretch the cells out. So that's my plan as I've been doing with the um, sandwich pours. So if you've been watching me, you'll know that when I started for the cups, I flipped the cups over, I torched straight away and then tilted. And of course the cells that I got up uh, when I torched all kind of got stretched and wonky as I tilted the canvas. And then just through pro progression of me learning and experimenting, uh, I worked out that it's better for me to have slightly smaller cells but prettier rounder cells uh, and therefore to torch a bit later in the process. That way they don't get stretched. So that's what I've been doing. And hopefully you guys have been coming along for the, the joy ride, watching that happen. It's like anything, isn't it? You practice, you learn, put what you've learnt into practice. <laughs> Okay, that's all the colours. Um, I'll do the whites and then I'll wash my hands. Right, here we go. A little bit of white. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of white over each. And then I'll come back and pour some more white over. I just don't want the white to sink into the others. I'm going to have to come up and check my video, see if it's still working. Like I said, 10, 10 minutes in and it, it stopped. But I do think it was because I made my video picture bigger. I think I made it like, instead of FHD, which I don't know, fine high definition. I don't know, I think I made it like QHD, which made the... I think it made the files bigger and I couldn't get as much videoing in. I think that's what happened. And I, I didn't actually realise it until I went to video and thought, hmm, oh, wonder why wouldn't the whites cut out after 10 minutes? And uh, I guess that's why, because I made my video file or picture or whatever bigger. I'm just going to climb up the ladder. Hang on one sec. I'm going to check, make sure it's still. Yep, we're good. It's still going. It's got me worried now. I'm going to have to do that a few times during the pour just to make sure it's still going. Okay, here we go. Nearly there. So I've got 2,400 grams of white and 1200 grams of colour, which is two parts white, one part colour. For my sandwich pour. And for the, uh, those of you that don't know where the name sandwich pour comes from, um, I'm assuming it's just because we've got a white layer and then some colour and then a white layer. It's kind of like having a sandwich. You've got your white slice of bread, and then you've got your fillings, and then you've got your top slice of bread, and you make a sandwich. So I think that's where the name came from. You're sandwiching your little bit of colour in between all your white. Now, are they about the same? Stand back, have a little look, see which one needs a little bit more, maybe. I think that's very close. previous um, 
like big one, like this, the scraped one. I kind of dragged a little bit. Um, I kind of flipped it and dragged it around like that. Kind of made a tail. The tails I did not like because they went stripy and where the stripes were, I got like this, there was a strap there, I got like the, a, a line of cells in the strap. So I'm gonna try not to do that. I'm actually just gonna try and just flip them over. And see how we're going with that. Hopefully, I've got enough. I know I've got like an extra corner there, but I didn't want them too same same. So I'll still just flip them over, but just not flip flop like I did in the previous one. Flipped it and then flopped it around, but then I got it was okay to leave back here, but then as I dragged the cuff, it got a tail. Did not like that. All right, let that sit there for a minute. I'm just going to make sure we're still good for. Taping. Oh, we're on 16 minutes, so we're past the 10 minute. Must be good. Actually, I'll show you my little practice one that I did yesterday. Seeing as that's still waiting there. It's a little bit pale. That's it there. Uh, that one was probably two and a half parts white to one and a half parts colour. And I just thought, oh, it's a little bit pale. So I've... Um, just decrease the white, two to one. Right, guys, let's do this. I'm excited. Please be pretty. <laughs> Can't do much about that, I don't think. Actually, you know what? I should put those on the outside and I can tip them off. I wonder if I can do that rather than have them in the middle. So if I flip this way and then I can get that blobby bit over there. See how what I mean about a stripy thin? But look, I'm probably going to tip that off anyway. I don't think it can be helped really. You're just going to have to, just going to have some areas that are like that. Um, Alright, but I'll try and do that with all of them actually. That way at least I can tip that blob a bit off, hey? And I'm just going to do this just to wet the edges. We'll be going over anyway. Now, how am I going to do this one? Come around here. Because I can't reach. Oh, maybe I can go behind the table. It's a bit tricky though. I've got a ladder there. I'll try. I have to move this. Whoops. Move that out of the way. Oh, I'm, I'm doing what I said I didn't want to do. Drag. Candyland. That's better. Try not to drag it. If I have to drag, I'll drag it off. Just wetting the edges. Help the paint flow off. See so if they come out really easily. So underneath, I've typed my my canvas on the bottom. I put my push pins in there, there, there. Same on the other side. In the middle are two pieces of timber and there's a gap about that much between the um, timber and the underside of the canvas. So I folded up a puppy piddle pad and chopped it in there so um, it won't dip. Now 
loving the colours. Now I've got to get this whole section done here. Oh, that's a lot of white in that one. I wonder why that one's so white. There's my stripes. It's okay. You need some paint, you know, extra paint to tip over the edges, so. See, I've got something. Tip from the middle out. So this is only going to be the one section and it's a bit blobby, but the rest of it, I've learned something. I still learn something every day. Oh my gosh. Right, here we go. Last one. Oh, that one's very grey. There's all the pink out of that one gone. Did I forget to put pink in the last one? No, yeah, it's there. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that looks so pretty. Okay, I've got a lot bigger, much bigger gap here. Did you see that fly? I get you. You just wait. Okay. Now, first thing I'm going to do is cover the whole canvas. I won't be turning this. It's too hard. This weighs about four kilos. So I won't be turning it. But I do need to try and cover the whole surface without losing too much paint. I need to get here, so I'm going to have to go across, stand at the other side of my table and try and tilt to get to that corner down there. Okay, I think that's it. I did it. Just going to put some paint there. It'll go over anyway. Just going to cover that side while I'm here. Actually, that would look better, a little bit more pale. All right. Oh, love it. Oh my gosh. So glad I poured from the outside in. Look, that's the only little problem area there. It'll be fine. You won't even notice that. Now, here. I need to get here. So take the weight back that way and then I'm going to go go south. All right. Up we go. Let's let go. Basically, just need to get that bottom corner there, really, don't I? Am I there yet? Are we nearly there? Oh, I think we're nearly there. I think we got it. Quickly back again. Don't lose too much. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Love that movement in it. It's just so much prettier than the other one was. So I'm glad I scraped it. Okay, now, um, so I fix up my sides. Last time I didn't fix up my sides, I thought I'll, I'll do it afterwards. And then I actually didn't get back to that, that corner again. So I'm just gonna do it now. And then it's done. And I'm gonna jump up and check the video again. Until I do this video, it's going to bother me that it, um, it's going to cut out. Okay, I'm going to jump back up and have a look, see how we're going. Oh, it's still going. Yay. Yep. <laughs> okay. 
Now, the only thing I need to do is just walk it back and forth to cover here. And as you can see, I've got plenty of paint. And because I haven't torched yet, I don't have to worry about cells overstretching it. I'm going to hang on to the two bars that are under here so that I can walk this paint. I'm going to have to walk it down here first. There's a pretty big gap there that I need to fill. Like that. Um, I'm covered in paint. Still have to do this corner here too. I haven't done here yet. back into frame. That's why my little lines are there. I get so many questions about why have you put marks on your surface? Well, it's kind of self-explanatory really, <laughs> if you think about it. Just to keep you guys in frame. It's nothing worse when you're you know, watching somebody and um, <laughs> they go out of frame and you're, you're screaming at the, the TV or whatever, I can't see! Put it back! <laughs> it's frustrating. Now, I just want some of this pink that's under here and carry it over to the other side because I don't know if I'm going to get to that area. I might, but I might not. The corners are always, always tricky. I might not be able to get back to that corner. I will try though because I don't like that corner. The others I can deal with. I probably should, when I'm tilting, I should just go over each corner, shouldn't I, and be done with it. Now this section here, this cup, it's a very big section. I don't like how big that is, so I'm going to try and bring everything down a little bit, but I want to see if I can go up to that corner first. No, it's going to have to stay. I'm not going to go down to that corner. Now I'm going to bring the weight of the paint back to the middle. And then I'm going to tip that way just to make that section a little bit smaller if I can. I just feel it's got a little bit of, oh look at that, I can go over the edge there. Look at that, look at that, almost. Okay, back to the middle. You can see how lovely it's moving. Um, all right, now I'm going to torch. I, I'm not going to worry about that corner, even though it, it kind of bugs me, but it's not worth it because I would lose so much paint over this edge here trying to get to that. Once it's got cells and things on it, and you're not going to even notice, you know, hanging up on the wall. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. You could just leave it like that, couldn't you? Okay, torching. So this is going to take a few minutes. Again, if you don't want to watch me heat paint, uh, fast forward and um, I'll see you in a few minutes when I'm done. Or if you want to just hang around and chat with me, stay tuned. This is just going to take a while. Because the paints, it's not necessarily a very thick consistency, but it's very, if there's a lot on there. It's like it's thick layers, not the consistency, so it takes a while for the heat to transfer down through the paint, warm it up, uh, warm the silicone up actually, and the silicone wants to come to the surface because oil and water don't mix, as you know, the oil wants to always rise to the surface, so that's what it's doing. It's coming to the surface and it's bringing paint with it. Hopefully
fully multicolored paint because it's in layers. The oil's come up through the different layers of paint that I had in the cup. Layers on the surface here. And that uh, makes pretty ringed cells. So that's one lot of torching. I'm going to go back and do it again. My nurse's shoulder allows me. It's already starting to hurt. It's a problem with nursing and lifting and carrying. You get the sore shoulder. So my shoulder's a little bit sore at the moment. Let's bring my elbow in a little bit. Okay, here we go. So where the white is quite thick, I won't get cells up. Here, see their white's pretty thick there, but that's okay, you get a blending. You want some white, otherwise it's not a sandwich pour if it's just all colour. The whole idea is having your white and your white blending. again because the tilting will stretch out the paint make it a little bit thinner and hopefully I'll get some more you know, the white will move thin out a little bit and then hopefully I'll get some more cells coming up than I would normally do even though yeah got a few few there so that's I don't really like that area there so much now what I did last time I walked it and I tipped over that way and then I couldn't really get back this way so I'm going to see what I can do differently I might go that way first pick up this edge here just see what happens I'm just going to very, very gently walk my paint. I can't really see what's going on down the other end there. I don't even know if it's moving. <laughs> I don't think it is. I'm going to go back the other end, walk all the way up, and I'm going to do the same over here. Try and walk it back that way. And what I'm doing is I'm just trying to stretch my cells out, really. I 
think I'm really going anywhere. I'm just going back the way I came. <laughs> they do look bigger, they do. So that's worked. Um, my last pour when I did this, I, I overstretched, I over tilted. So I'm not going to do that this time. I would rather just have beautiful small cells than overstretch them and then elongate them and all that kind of thing. Um, so let me see if I can move the weight of the paint down there just a tad. So this is moving here. That's not moving up there, so. I go very, very slowly. Just want to see if I can get some of that to move off. Oh, look, it's starting to stretch up here. Oh. No, I'm not going to. I'm just going to bring it back. I'm not going to, I'm not going to risk it. I did last time. I did that last time and I ruined it. Let's go back. Plenty of paint. You can see how it's moving really well. so so pretty and that little bit of tilting was just enough to open up the cells I'm gonna get you fly did you see him fly through he's gonna be a walk in a minute um, what else what else do I want some baby cells maybe do I do I do I sometimes I regret putting the baby cells in afterwards no I'm gonna leave it Go over there, torch. Go over there. Now, I wonder if I can just bring that down a little bit. No. No! Julie, stop fiddling. You guys yelling at me, stop fiddling. Doesn't matter what I do, I'm always going to think, oh, what if I just do this or what if I just do that? You guys need to just learn how to walk away. You know, just walk away. The previous one where I scraped it, I ruined it. I kept tilting and thinking, oh, there's just this little bit up here. I'm just going to move that. I stretched everything. As I said before, previous times, if you're 70% happy with it, just walk away. I don't think anyone's ever going to be 100% happy with their pool. There's always going to be something in there that bugs you. Uh, it's it's not worth fiddling. It really isn't. You'll just end up ruining it. And this is a lot of paint to waste. I already wasted the last three and a half kilos of paint. Oh, look at that. I haven't gone over that yet. All that. Let me just check my camera's still going and then I'm going to do those edges. Oh, I love the colours, you guys. What are we up to? Oops, what are we up to? 39 minutes. Um, let me just stop this because it, uh, it cuts out at 40 minutes. I'm going to stop it and, and just go again. Okay. Yeah, it stops at 40 minutes. Um, now, I'm just going to fix that side. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so much better than my first one. Now here I need some pale apricot, so get a big amount if you can, put it there at the top, let it run down on its own, make a little pretty pattern. I know it doesn't match exactly, but hey, it's not bad. It's never going to match exactly. Try not to use muddy paint. Try to pick up a, a fresh amount of paint that you haven't stuck your tool in previously. If you can. Um, there's 
a little bit there too. Okay, that's done. That's done. Oh, it's so pretty. When it dries, I'll show it to you up in my bedroom on the wall. And I'll show you the previous one, the one that's up there at the moment. Show you both of them. There's a swipe. Same colours, peaches, pinks, grey. Actually, I think it was metallic silver. Um, now, last thing I want to do is, I just want to pick this up here and just move that down ever so slightly. Okay, there we go. That was all that I wanted to do. Just, it was a little bit top heavy of cells there, not too much there, so I just brought them down just a bit. Okay, and I'm not going to torch anymore. I'm not going to get those little baby ones up. Oh, phew. that was great. I really enjoyed that. It's so much fun when you actually get one that works, isn't it? All right, I'm going to take you down for a close up. Okay, here we go. Climb down my ladder. There we go. My ladder, my stool, tripod, way up there. Just turn that glare off. Okay. Look at that. All right. Well, that corner. What can you do? What can you do? We'll just not look at it. <laughs> Multicoloured cells. Beautiful background. Now you can see here, here's a good example of where I had a bit of a stripe. And the cells follow the stripe for some reason it's just that one area there so I can deal with it I might actually just video from here so there we go beautiful pinks shades of pink Got some apricot in there pink and the apricot kind of make a little bit of a um, peach or salmon kind of a color it's really pretty. I don't know why this isn't focusing properly. Let me just try something else. I think I must have changed my video settings. I just shouldn't play with the phone, should I? And then over here we've got a, more of a pale pinky whitey background and then up there it's the darker grey. Heading into the peach, so pretty. Again the white, bit of apricot there. It's really really pretty, happy with this one. Back to the grey. And do you like the movement? I do like the movement. Um, as I said, I either go for full-on stripes and then try and keep the stripes when I'm tilting. But it's really difficult to do with such a big canvas. I think if you're going to do a big canvas, you're better off doing a more of a free-flowing sort of a, a technique style. So there it is. I can't even... Oh, I don't even think I can show you all in one. <laughs> no, not really. It's too big. <laughs> all right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. I'm really, really happy with it. And, um, yeah, I'll show you it once it's dry up on my wall. So thanks for watching. And um, 
I'll, I'll certainly see you for the next one. I don't know what I'm going to do next. Hey, what's going to beat this big sucker? <laughs> all right. Thanks again. Love you all. Bye for now.